to episode 7 of Building a Blu-ray HTPC on TK Arena. Yeah, here we are again. I've uh, spent the whole week testing all these different video cards in the system. Um, spent a lot of time watching um, Ghost Rider. Right. Uh, I've seen it in the movie enough times now <laughs> to, to do me a lifetime, that's for sure. But uh, I have come to a conclusion of what video card I want to use and um, there's some surprising results in, in my testing as well. Uh, M4 630i chipset, which is integrated onto the motherboard mm -hmm. that we chose. That's right, yeah. What did you think of that? Well, unfortunately, it wasn't compatible with some of the players. And okay. although it played um, Blu ray, it did support Blu ray using Cyberlink Power DVD um, at 720p. Right. Uh, it was not able to support 1080p at all. I mean, it, it played it, but it was unwatchable. Yeah. So, so, um, if, if uh, you've only got a, a 720p, if it's, a, it's, a, it's adequate, a, yeah. adequate, just, but um, anything higher than that, um, unfortunately no. And as I said, it was also incompatible with some of the other players. Yeah. That is a driver issue, but um, and support from the actual manufacturers themselves. But, um, Next along the line we have the Radeon HT 3450. What did you think of that one, John? Well, um, that, this was the surprising card of the lot. I really didn't expect a lot of performance out of it, but um, it definitely did surprise me. Um, for a, a, you know, a, the cheapest card in the whole roundup, um, it had all the features that I required. It supported uh, 1080p. Playback was smooth as silk. Right. It was cool, quiet. Um, game performance was a little bit of an issue, but it was able to play in the for speed carbon, which is like a year old, right. um, at uh, full resolution. You know, so uh, you know, 1080p resolution. So. Uh, as a gaming solution, although it, or the media solution uh, as far as video played out the back was great, as a gaming solution it's definitely not my choice. Okay. Alright, next up we have the NX8500 GT, which is an MSI card. Again, it's passively cooled, mm -hmm. um, so it's not, not going to, noise is not going to be an issue. No. Um, performance wise it was kind of similar to the uh, 3450, but um, 1080p playback, although seemed smooth, every now and then I did see it a jolt that wasn't quite smooth. Now, what do you think that was caused well, by? Well, I actually think it was an issue with heat. The card ran hotter, it was you know, anywhere up of 85 degrees Celsius when I, when I put the temperature gun on it um, before yeah. taking it out of the case. Um, that's not why it was running, that's like a minute after I turned it off as well. So right. it was extremely hot due to, um, I think part of it was due to the case design, the, the case we chose. Because it's a passive cooled solution, there is no thermal, um, you know, no thermal solution in that case that actually cooled There's it. There's no fans. No fans. Yeah, no, nothing blow, no air blowing, no air circulation whatsoever around that area. So we actually got a heat spot around this part of the car. So you've got, the, you've got a lovely big heat sink on there and whatever else, but yeah, that heat sink is way too hot to touch. I mean, I'm, I think I actually right. did burn my, one of my thumbs when I was trying to take it out the first time. Now this, this ATI slash AMD card is, um, it's heavy. Um, now when you see a big fan on, uh, on a card like that, you're going to expect it to be noisy, but the surprising thing was it was soaked. Considering the size of the, car, the, the, size of the card, it was um, as quiet as the little ATI card right. there. But obviously with this one you'd expect much better gameplay. Um, perfect gameplay. Great. World of Warcraft, Need for Speed, um, Warcraft 3, I mean anything that I might want to play on my, my big... Blu-ray, 1080p. Everything was, it was flawless. I guess that's the difference in that it is a higher end card mm -hmm. and it is designed for multimedia PC so you're going to have better support all around. That's right, yeah. Okay, the last card we have is the uh, NVIDIA 8800 GTS from uh, Gigabyte. This is a gaming card, it's not a multimedia card. You plug it in, turn it on, and you can tell straight away it's not designed for multimedia PC. This thing is loud. Yeah. It's um, way too loud to have in any type of multimedia PC, unfortunately. Yeah. Although the performance is as good, probably better than the, uh, the ATI card in gaming performance and stuff like that. Because of the thermal solution on there, it is totally an unviable. Yeah. So it really does pay to, to buy a video card that is specifically designed Definitely. for a multimedia Well, I mean, you, you, first of all, you need to decide what you want. Right. Um, I wanted both um, Blu-ray playback yes. 
and gaming support, so 3D support. We might do other things on the computer as well, and slideshows. And you don't want to be limited. I don't yep. want to be limited in, with my solution. And um, considering there's, you know, um, $100 price difference between that and a budget card. Okay, so we'll see you next week for episode 8, where mm -hmm. we'll be discussing the players. Yes, and we've got three different players to look at. Yes. We're going to look at, be looking at all the features of those players. And Compatibilities, yep. etc. And also BD Live. And BD Live, yes. We've got it working, finally. <laughs> we have working BD Live discs. There are many discs out there, but we managed to get one. Three. Three. Three, three. BD Live discs. As of today, today. Well, two yesterday, there's three there's today. There's three today, yeah. yes. So, so uh, we'll be looking at all that in the next episode. See you then. See ya.